Welcome to my mouse acceleration guide. In this video, I'm going to help you to create your very own mouse excel curve tailored to your needs as a player. I'll also share with you my exact settings so that way maybe you can have a template to start with. Meanwhile, we're going to make this extremely simple. It doesn't have to be overly complex. I'll be with you every step of the way. Let's go ahead and get started. First, given that this is probably the most misunderstood setting of all time, maybe let's go ahead and clearly define what it is. I'm going to let this clip roll. And what I want you to do is I want you to pay attention to just how dynamic my sensitivity is depending upon the situation that it called for. This is because mouse acceleration scales your sensitivity more dynamically. In the past, I refer to this as being able to combine a high and low sense, which is still accurate. I now think of it as providing the proper sense at the proper time. That is perfectly depicted in these clips that I'm showing. I have a high sense when I need it. I also have a slow sense when I need it and also something in between. This is precisely why mouse acceleration I think is so beneficial to me personally. Prior to me using this, I I often felt like you know any sense I chose there was always a compromise. I would play a slow sense and I would reap those benefits of precision and accuracy. But there were moments where perhaps I needed to turn around to save my life and I simply wouldn't be able to do it in time. So to solve that problem I would simply increase my sensitivity but that also came with its own issues. That's not to say that this is for everyone right there is no such thing as one thing that is going to be for everyone. There are identifying markers so if you're someone who normally head cases over your settings this will add just one more thing in your chain to head case over. If that is you, there is a cure and it's called taking responsibility for 100% of the shots you hit, but also the shots you miss. Your FOV chain from 97 to 103 just as an example, is not why you lost that gunfight. You are an imperfect person, which means for the rest of your life, you will always miss shots you probably shouldn't have missed. Good players have an understanding that you are in control over your settings. It's not the other way around. In addition to head casing, there may be an element of a lack of experimentation with your settings. Nine times out of 10, this comes out of fear, right? They're afraid to change something because of the head casing. It's a catch 22, as they say. The cure for that is also simple. Simply do more experimentation. In any case, moving forward, there are really two ways of using mouse acceleration. The first of which is going to be through like your in-game client through the settings. You know, COD has this, Halo has this, a whole bunch of other games has this. But what they all share in common is that these are all pretty bad. This leaves us with one option, and that is to use a third party program, Red Flag. Is it perhaps even remotely possible to get banned? No, even in a game like Valorant, which has a highly intrusive anti-cheat, you'll be just fine. A link to download custom curve has been provided down below. For those of you who may ask, you may wanna know why we're not using RawXL. That's because in my experimentation phase with both programs, custom curve is better and more simple. Of course, start with a free version, but if at some point you actually want the pro version to get the best out of your Excel, definitely go ahead and use my code HALO. With that installing on your PC, let's go ahead and take a look at this graph. I'm gonna teach you how to read it. The X axis of the graph represents the velocity of the mouse. The Y axis represents the corresponding sensitivity. Now with the program installed, I want you to pay attention to this little box here. It says persistent settings. Checking that box will allow you to effectively close the program and your Excel settings will still be running in the background. I personally would recommend this. Let's shift our focus over to the presets. And what I want you to do is select preset eight. This style of curve is called a jump curve. With this preset, you're not gonna get any acceleration until you cross this threshold, subsequently hitting a cap sense as well. This style of curve is great for beginners, but also veterans. And if we take a look over here on the left, we take note of the sensitivity. Notice how this is set to one, which means effectively your sensitivity hasn't changed at all. Whatever you've been using is still remaining the same. Get a feel for this, right? Pause the video if necessary and come back in a few when you're ready. Now for me personally, if I'm choosing this particular style of curve, what I'm intending to do is I want to be able to take advantage of a low sense, but still be able to do a 180. For good measure, let's say I don't want to change my in-game sensitivity. I like the way it is. So perhaps what I want to do though, is I want the Excel to kick in sooner. I'll go ahead and dial it back maybe two or three notches and see how that feels. Let's say you have the opposite problem. Let's say you want to elongate the curve. Well, let's go ahead and reset it and we can do that. We can also raise or decrease the cap sense if we want to. Inevitably, when you come across something you like, don't forget to save it. I would recommend putting your in-game sense the DPI, the game you're playing is part of the file name. Don't feel compelled to make any changes to the presets either, right? That's not necessary. And remember too, we're also going to talk about creating your own curve, right? So not relying on the presets. And just so we're clear, all of the presets are actually great out of the box as is without any modification. Now, if you like what you got, feel free to come back to this video at a later date. But for those of you who want a more perhaps dynamic sense, or you want to create your own curve, we have more to cover. Let's draw our attention again to the presets. And this time, let's go ahead and select preset one. This style of curve 
curve is called natural. Quite important, we want to take note of the sense change on the left here, and we can see it's cutting our sense by more than half. Taking note of the cap sense, we can see it's capped to what our sensitivity was prior to using Excel. Because of this, I'm going to go ahead and actually increase my sensitivity a fair bit. If you don't, it's probably not going to feel all that great to you. I can't stress that enough. As you go to the presets, you're probably going to need to make some adjustments to your sense. In any case, this curve smoothly scales to a limit of the user's usual sensitivity with no detectable hard cap and provides increasing precision with slower motions. Me personally, I love this style of curve, and that's true regardless of the style of game I'm playing. Next, let's go ahead and take a look at preset three. Right away, we can see for the most part, this is pretty much the inverse of what we were just using at preset one. One key difference is that it's actually cutting our sensitivity perfectly in half, but similarly caps it at one just like last time. This style increases sensitivity in a concave up shape. The increase at slow hand speeds is gentle, and the increase just prior to the limit is sharper before hard cam for faster motions. Now this one is another one of my personal favorites. Now this one is going to kind of hang you in the low sense for a longer duration, but once it picks up momentum, you are going to feel that sense increase. Preset one had the inverse effect where you're going to get to where you want to go faster, but there's really no perceptible hard cap. And because you change your sense with preset one, you may not need to make any adjustments this time around unless you feel the need to. Now let's shift our focus to preset two, and this is perhaps one of the most popular styles of curve. That is the linear curve curve. With this style of curve, your sensitivity is constantly changing, but the rate of sensitivity increase is always consistent, and it hard caps to stabilize the sensitivity for fast hand motions. And just like always, we take a look at the left here, and we can see it cuts our sense by half and caps at one. If we go to preset six, this is the exact style of curve, but this is uncapped. The question you may have may be along the lines of why does one have a cap and one doesn't? Well, although both are linear curves, preset six, you may notice, is more subtle more gentle. Preset 2 is definitely a bit more aggressive. The truth is, you could add a cap to preset 6 if you want to, and you could remove the cap from preset 2 if you want to. Here's the thing. When I was new to mouse acceleration, I loved linear. However, as I gained more experience, I've been drawn to other styles of curves. The reason was actually listed in the description of preset 6, but can also be applied to preset 2. It reads, but is not recommended for users who make a lot of ballistic flick hand motions. I found that for flick heavy games, linear just didn't feel all that consistent. Sure, the sensitivity is constantly consistently changing, but for some reason in games that I needed to flick a lot, it just didn't feel all that consistent. In no way am I trying to influence you to not use linear. Finally, let's go ahead and shift our focus to preset seven, precision, and this is the last of my favorites. This style starts at zero, as you can see, and rises very quickly. The majority of sensitivity change occurs at the very slowest and therefore most controlled hand speeds. This can be nice for people who like the general feel of an unaccelerated sensitivity, yet with a very large bonus to precision only with the very slowest motions. One thing to note is that although this looks like a very aggressive style of curve, you may be surprised that this is actually one of the more subtle style of curves. To me personally, I would describe this as feeling intuitive. It feels great whether I'm playing a tracking heavy game or if I need my flicks to be dead consistent. And kind of like preset eight, for the most part, you probably don't have to make a sense adjustment if you don't want to. That is of course, unless you want to. Now, before I share with you my personal mouse excel curve, I'm gonna go through the rest of the presets rather quickly starting at preset four. This is called offset linear. This is an alternative to the quadratic curve with sensitivity linearly increasing only once the user's mouse speed surpasses five inches per second. This is a preset that I tried briefly and I simply just couldn't get it to feel intuitive. But if that matches the description of what you're looking for, give this a try and maybe right up your alley. The next is preset five called the S shape. This is a symmetrical sigmoid curve, a combination of the gentle rise of the quadratic curve but with a smooth scaling to limit from the natural style. This can remove any feeling of a hard cap to the acceleration. If that defines what you're looking for, give it a try. Now I'm gonna share with you my settings, why I use what I use, and then I'll help you to make your own curve. In order for what I use to make sense, we need to understand some things. One, I use a glass mouse pad, which is mostly frictionless, it's very fast. Two, I play a very high sensitivity of approximately 10 centimeters per 360 across all games. Three, a big part of my aiming style 
style is to use something called the one frame flick. My goal is to be able to hit a one frame flick really at any direction at any time, including a perfect 180 if necessary. My mouse Excel settings demands that I have perfectly consistent settings. I do not have the time to one frame flick onto someone, have it be inconsistent, and then make an adjustment later. If I don't have that, that could mean that I lose the match, or at the very least, I lose the gunfight. For my style of aiming and the consistency demands that I have, I use preset 7. The precision style of curve allows for me to take advantage of an insanely high sense on a pretty much frictionless mouse pad. All the while, I can actually still track targets out at range and have a sensitivity decrease for increased control. And although I find myself using preset 7, I also like preset 8 for this style of aiming as well. If you're wondering if I make any adjustments to preset 7, the answer is no, I don't. I am extremely simple minded and I don't see the value in finding things to modify for the sake of modifying modification. That isn't to say that sometimes modification is necessary because that is true, which is why I'm now going to show you how to create your very own curve. At this point, I would say it's almost a requirement to have a basic understanding of all the different presets and all the different styles of curves. That's a big ask for someone who's probably been using mouse Excel for less than 15 minutes. If that's true, I would recommend putting a bookmark on this video, coming back to it later and do a lot of experimentation if you feel the need to do so. Don't force it if you like a preset, stay on it and stay on it for as long as you enjoy it. But if something doesn't feel right and you want to experiment with another preset, then do that. But for good measure, let's say you know exactly what you like. You know the style of curve. So with that in mind, let's get started. First, load into your game of choice in a private match without any bots of any kind. Now that you've done this, disable mouse acceleration entirely. That doesn't mean you have to disable the program. Simply uncheck that box and then close the program. Then I want you to find a sensitivity that is rather low, but it still feels usable to you. Try to imagine tracking a target out at range where you need a really low sense. This is just an example. Let's say you normally play on 1.6 in game, but let's say a one in game sense feels good as a slow sense. Open up the calculator and put one. Then we're gonna take what you normally play on, something that feels good to you day to day. This is sort of like your moderate sense. Let's say that would be 1.6. This comes out to 0.625. We then put that multiplier into custom curve as shown here. Be sure to put your sense back to whatever it was previously. Previously. This is also where the style of curve you like comes in as well. If you liked preset one the most, let's go ahead and kind of emulate that. Like to preset three more, we can emulate that as well. As for the length of curve desired before you hit the cap, pull it back or elongate it as needed. Simply go in game and try to flick onto something and try to make it as consistent as you possibly can. Don't let yourself head case over this. It's not that difficult. Like something, keep it. Don't like something, don't be afraid to change it. I also want to encourage you that if you don't like a curve right away, that's not to say that it's not for you. With every preset, there's an adjustment to be had there. So give yourself time. Speaking for myself, I hated Mouse Excel altogether for the first week or two, but beyond that, I started to really appreciate it. This means if you're not exactly a patient person, this is going to be difficult. Be patient with yourself. Know it's gonna take time and yeah, you're gonna miss a fair amount of shots. In the end, if you enjoy it, that's awesome. And if you don't, Time isn't wasted, you learned a valuable lesson. Experimentation in the long run is almost always worth the short-term discomfort. That's because you gain something called perspective. If you wanna learn how to one-frame flick, I have left a link in the description below. 